Moving products quickly from design to market is imperative in every industry. It means staying ahead of competition and staying up with customer demand. The reduced cycle time to bring Explorer to market is a good example of that. The DCX single stage to orbit demonstrator is another. Rapid prototyping moved that program from concept to operating hardware in a little over 18 months. A fascinating new tool of rapid prototyping is a technology called stereolithography. It's a way to drive down the price of the most costly and time-consuming stage of new product development, the creation of physical models from design concept. We're using stereolithography at Douglas Aircraft, and the IPD core engineering department at McDonnell Douglas Aerospace is applying it on the FA-18 ENF program. Stereolithography is is a process where we can go directly to the image on the computer screen and convert that image into a physical plastic part. There is so much to these combat aircraft that it's difficult for any designer to consider everything they're going to run across. But with stereolithography parts, you can, before the dimensions are made and, and a drawing is turned out, you can get the physical part, try it, and see if it's going to clear the structure, if it's going to clear the wire bundles and fit up to the fittings right. And if there is a problem, you can make the correction before you release the drawing. Or if it works fine, then you know that you're, you're doing the right thing, investing in the tooling before you do it. When a designer has a part he would like us to make with stereolithography, he gives us the three-dimensional CAD image that is either of surfaced or solid format. And the first step we do is on Unigraphics, there's a program that will re-represent re the geometry of the part in little bitty triangles or, or facets. And the, the output of the program then gets sent to a regular DOS-type computer that will then take all of that data, arranging it into several layers, or thousands, actually. Um, these layers will then be sent to the stereolithography machine, and it uh, works by using ultraviolet light that is provided by a laser beam to solidify a liquid photosensitive acrylic polymer. Wherever the beam shines on it, it causes this acrylic resin to solidify. The process starts out where an elevator platform is positioned right at the surface level of the, the resin, and the ultraviolet light shines in the shape of the cross section of the first layer. And when the first layer is completed, the elevator drops down to let fresh resin run over top of that resin that's already been solidified. Then the platform positions itself one layer thickness lower than it just was to let the second layer solidify. Then it drops down again for fresh resin and comes back up, does a third layer, fourth layer, and just, it's as if we were to take, say, a deck of cards and each card cut out in the shape of a cross section of the part. When you stack them all up, you end up with a coffee cup or, or parts to the F-18 or whatever it is that the designer wants to have made. When a part is finished in the machine, it comes up out of the liquid and it's got support structure that has attached it to the platform while it's being built. So we need to remove it from the platform. We rinse it in a solvent to get the uncured liquid off. And then we have to do some post curing. So we have an oven that is about like a tanning booth that puts out ultraviolet light and finishes curing the part. The part is actually deliverable at that state, but occasionally we have people that want to have a finished part where it's painted. Well, this is one of my favorite parts to demonstrate the worth of this. It's, it's a little fan blade, and if you gave me the, the CAD model to this, I could process the data 
and run it in the machine probably even before the day is over, have it back in your hands. You could probably the next day have this on a, on a motor shaft, spin it up and try to cool the equipment that you were going to use to have this fan cool and find out the results if your design was going to do the job or not. And with conventional means, this would probably take a week or two weeks minimum, I would say. Actually, most parts that we make are, are not nearly that small. In fact, a lot of them are so big that we can't even make them in one piece. But for example, this part, that's not at all a problem. This was too big for us to make in one piece. So we just, in this case, the, the lower portion of this was made in the machine, and then I made this separately, and we just put the two pieces together. We've had some pieces that are even four feet long that we've put together in sections and it works out fine. The F-18 has been our biggest customer. Uh, we've had several portions of the, the wings where, especially with the, the hydraulic actuators controlling the control surfaces, the designers have wanted to see if they had enough clearance to get the parts in and just to see if everything was going to work out all right. And when you just have a blueprint, the producibility engineer that will evaluate it has to have a good eye to not overlook things. But when you have the physical part, it's pretty easy to see that it would be better if they put a radius in here or didn't do this this way because it's going to be a problem to machine. As designers become more aware of what we're capable of doing here and people begin to talk about, hey, we could do this, it's just opening all kinds of doors of, of applications. And uh, the sky is almost the limit as to what the designers can use it for. And we're just getting into what it can be used for. The IPD Corps Engineering Department is looking at additional applications for stereolithography. Their goal is to acquire equipment that makes parts out of powdered metals for high temperature applications such as wind tunnel test models. And that's our report. Thank you for watching and look for us again in 90 days.